Quadrilaterals we know are polygons that are made up of four edges. However, we also know we tend to use words such as squares, rectangles, or even trapezoids to describe a lot of these figures. That's what we need to look at. What takes a shape from simply being a quadrilateral to one of these more specific types? We're going to start by looking at trapezoids. In order for a figure to be a trapezoid, first off, it must be a quadrilateral and have four edges. From there, we need to look for one set of parallel edges. That means there are two edges on the figure that are never going to cross, touch, or intersect with one another. The type of trapezoid that most of us tend to be familiar with is an isosceles trapezoid. On an isosceles trapezoid, we still have our one set of parallel edges, but we also need to look for the isosceles portion, which means there are two edges that are congruent. So in order to be an isosceles trapezoid, we need one set of parallel edges and one set of congruent edges. In order for a figure to be a parallelogram, first off, it needs to be a quadrilateral and have four edges. From there, we need to look for two sets of parallel edges, meaning the top and bottom edge are never going to cross, touch, or intersect, and the left and right edge are never going to cross, touch, or intersect. In addition to being parallel, opposite edges also have to be congruent. That means the left and right edges are going to be the same length, and the top and bottom edges are going to be the same length. From there, we can look at the angles on a parallelogram. On a parallelogram, opposite angles are going to be congruent, meaning these two angles are going to have the same measure, and these two angles are going to have the same measure. From a parallelogram, we can go to a more specific type called a rectangle. In order to be a rectangle, we have to have opposite sides be equal and parallel, but instead of opposite angles being congruent, we need all four angles to be congruent. More specifically, the angles on a rectangle have to be right angles worth 90 degrees each. On a rhombus, we have opposite sides that are parallel and we have opposite angles that are congruent. However, instead of just having opposite sides be congruent, we have all four edges that are congruent. From a rhombus, we can construct probably the most specific type of parallelogram and that would be a square. In order for a figure to be a square, all four sides have to be congruent, opposite sides have to be congruent, and all four angles have to be worth 90 degrees. This means a square is related to a parallelogram, a rhombus, and a rectangle since it shares characteristics of each. In order for a figure to be a kite, it has to have two sets of congruent sides. However, these congruent edges are going to be consecutive, meaning they join at an endpoint. On a kite, we also need to look for one set of congruent angles. Next time you see a quadrilateral, look at the characteristics of its edges and angles and see if you can find any patterns. If you do, use those patterns to give it its most specific name possible.